Welcome back trips, let's tab 59. Hope you're all well. First tab for me, just had a bit of a knee problem. Weather's not been great today either. And you can see behind me up there, got a lot of showers coming in. Bit of thunder, don't know if that microphone picked up or not. So I thought I'd start the video here when I'm getting back to let's tab 59 headquarters. So if it starts to rain, cause I'm using a camera, a mobile phone camera, and uh, if obviously it rains on that, I can't, I can't video. So, been out of the game a little bit. Like I said, I haven't been tabbing for a while, nearly a week now, with the old knee. But it's a lot better, and thanks for all the advice people have been giving me. So we do the video back here. So, stand by your beds, as the title suggests. We're going to talk about uh, room inspections, locker inspections, bed block inspections, and of course, uh, show parades. Now, doesn't really matter which army you're from. I'm sure out in uh, in Australia and out in New Zealand and out in the United States, Canada, etc., and lots of other countries during basic training, most soldiers, most servicemen and women, when they go through basic training, will at some stage have locker inspections, room inspections, etc. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So during my basic training, then room inspections. And on top of that, you had block jobs to do. So if you imagine your block of accommodation, these are people that aren't in the military. If you imagine the block that soldiers live in, sailors, Air Force living, those blocks have got communal areas. You've got your washrooms, your showers, your baths, uh, your blanco rooms or your cleaning rooms or whatever, your corridors, your stairwells. And you've got the outside areas. All those have got to be tied up and cleaned every day that you're working. You might get off at weekends during basic training, but... If you're in camp, not out in the field training, then those jobs have to be done. And every morning, your room and your locker and your bed and you will be inspected. Now, who inspects you? Well, normally day to day, it's going to be your section corporal or your bombardier, section bombardier in the army. One of those two will come round and the room senior, or, which is another recruit like yourselves, but he's been given the opportunity of being the room senior for whatever reason. He'll still be up, up, stood up by the door. He'll hear the shoes coming down the corridor, the old clip clop of the ammo boots. Shoes important. <clears throat> and you know they're on the way, the inspecting guy's on his way. And as he comes up to the room door, the room senior will be stood there and he'll bring the room up to, up to attention. Room, room, shut. Everyone comes to attention. And then in comes the inspecting guy. And he'll walk round to each bed space in turn, inspect you. Then he'll inspect your bed and your locker. Now, what is he looking for? Well, obviously, like I said, the room itself has got to be cleaned. Back in my day, it was like a lino, linoleum floor. Well, I can't remember. Hello, my name's Larry. The linoleum, linoleum, the lino, like the lino floor. We had like a red coloured floor and that used to have to be waxed and, um, and cleaned and polished up. We used to sweep it, mop it, and then it would have to be... Um, it'd have to be polished and we used to have this tin of like uh i suppose it was um, an orange beeswax horrible stuff you get a handful of that throw that on the floor somebody else would be there with uh with some rag rubbing that polish into the floor and then there'd be one or two lads going behind him with floor bumpers handheld floor bumpers just rubbing the floor until you get a really good glossy shine that's got to be done every morning do it the night before, or you can do it in the morning. It's up to you. We've got a lot to do in the morning. So he's looking at the room itself, everything. And then he's going to be looking, as he comes to your bed space, you. He'll inspect you, whatever dress you happen to be in. Behind you would be your locker with the locker doors open, so you can see inside your locker. What's going on in there? Well, all your 1157, that's your clothing account, will be stored in that locker. <clears throat> on the top shelf, you might have your best boots stood there. Uh, and either side of that may be your socks. All your socks have got to be rolled up and squared away. Down the shelves, down the left-hand side, the old wooden lockers, there'd be, uh, for instance, on one shelf would be your PT kit. So there would be your red, your white PT vest, and your blue shorts, red, white, and blue, all folded up in order. Everything has to be folded the same thickness, the same width, clean, your washing, shaving kit laid out. Everything, all in your locker, all your clothes hung up, all your jackets and shirts, all hang up on coat hooks, all with the sleeves facing the same way you can imagine. It's immaculate, hopefully. And then you come onto your bed. <clears throat> On the bed, we didn't have quilts, obviously, like got now, they have duvets. 
So you had um, just a mattress with a mattress cover on it. Then over the top of that would be a counterpane, like a thin sort of covering, blanket, top sheet. Uh, it could be a coloured one, orange, blue, there's different colours. And that would be stretched across the bed nice and tight with hospital corners folded all round. And then on top of that, up by the headboard, would be your sheets and blankets. And they'd be arranged in what we called a bed block. So you would lay out a blanket, an army blanket, and then inside there you would put a white sheet, another blanket, and then a white sheet, another blanket maybe, I can't remember how many we had, and then the, so it'd be like blanket, white sheet, blanket, white sheet, and then the outer blanket would be rolled over it and made into a square block. Again, it has to be really nice and square. Some guys used a bit of cardboard in there to square it off, make it look better. And that all had to be the same width and thickness, etc. And that had to be immaculate on your bed. Now, if he wasn't happy with either your locker layout or your bed, your bed block, guess what? It's going. It's going to get launched. I've seen best boots going out the window. I lived on the top floor during basic training by a window. I remember, no matter what time of year it was, what the weather was doing, that window used to be open every morning. All the windows open. He'd come around with a measuring tool and measure each window was open the same amount on the same number of hooks on the latch. So I was right by a window. So my boots got launched out the window a few times, I can tell you, from the top floor. And my bed block. My bed block's gone flying before. And all this kit gets thrown around, especially in the early days of basic training when you're not getting it right. He'll enforce, he'll reinforce how you've got to get it right by punishing you, by throwing your kit around. And you've got to take it. And it's all part of basic training. Because remember, when you're a young soldier coming from home, you didn't have to do any of that. You didn't have a locker. You had a wardrobe. And your mum probably put your kit in there. And, uh, you know, you might not have even made your bed back in the day. When you get in the army, all change. And some people have got to learn the hard way. So as time goes on, those inspections, you get better at doing your inspections. You know, you get more success with your bed block and your locker layout, etc. And uh, so you don't get so much kit thrown around as your training progresses. That's what I found anyway. Now, as I say, there's other jobs to do in the block. When you think after basic training, you get to your battalion, your regiment, there's no more of that detail. No more of that detail. It's not happening. So things are a lot more relaxed. You still get the odd room inspection. You've got to keep your room tidy, but you're not going to get your locker stared at like they were in basic training. Until, until you do your first promotion course, certainly in infantry and the artillery and, and sure the Royal Engineers, etc. you can get your trade qualifications. So you do a, a spanner course and that will promote you to Lance Corporal. Here comes the rain. Let's get inside. Let's have 59. So you get into your, you're going to have to do oh, bed blocks. Look at the state of this room, by the way. The trace around has decided we want to decorate. So the last couple of days I've been humping kit out of here. Mate, yesterday I was sweating like an infantryman on a mass test. We cleared the room out. Everything's been tossed out of here and she's got the paintbrush out. And, uh, Everything's been dropped into this room. The rain's really started. Timed that just right, by the way. By the way. So, getting back to room inspections. It all finishes after basic training until you do your NCOs carder. Now, this is a, a course that we run in the British Army that qualifies you to promote from private soldier to Lance Corporal, Lance Bombardier, depending on what core or cat badger in so when you do your, it's normally about a six week course your NCO's carder nine times out of ten it's run by the battalion or the regiment on your camp sometimes you go away and over that six weeks you learn different skills to become a leader and uh, and part of that I mean as, a, as becoming a junior NCO you need to know how to take troops for drill so instead of being marched around you march them round, then your mate takes his turn and so on. And they grade you accordingly of you taking the drill or you taking a weapon lesson or you taking a, a map reading lesson, for instance. But part of that, to learn to be a Lance Corporal or Lance Bombardier, you'll get room inspections again. But this time, you'll come round as, as a duty student for that day uh, and, and you'll do the inspecting of your own guys. And it should try to teach you how you should react as an inspecting officer or inspecting junior NCO when you're inspecting your troops. 
So you will go through, possibly go through, uh, maybe not bed blocks, but certainly through making your beds and standing by your beds and a bit of a locker inspection during that course. And then, of course, there's going to be another time. Um, I don't know if it's still done, but certainly back in my day, there was another two courses you done that would involve inspections. And another thing, which I'll come on to in a moment, show parades. Let's talk about that. So what was that all about? Well, if you did your all arms drill course, there's two, all arms basic drill course and all arms advanced drill course. It used to be run down at Purbright when that was the guards division depot. That's where the all arms drill wing was down at Purbright. It's moved now, I believe it's in Catterick. Uh, but it used to be down there in Purbright, and you would go down there. I think, again, that was a six-week course of basic. And the basic course was for, uh, I think, full corporals and junior. Yeah, I think corporals that was, a corporals course. There was an advanced course, and I think that was sergeants and above, I think. I might be wrong. And, of course, while you're on that drill course, yes, you're learning how to take drill. The instructors you get down there are obviously all from the guards regiments, fantastic instructors. I mean... Guardsmen, you guardsmen out there, big respect. You know what you do when it comes to drill. And the idea is they bring your drill up to scratch uh, on that course and you take the drill. You do the words of command. You go a lot more into the drill than you would have done because you're now teaching drill. And when you get your final tests, you get given drill lessons. And, of course, you can't do it from a pamphlet. You've got to stand on the parade square and march that body of men and women around that parade square doing different turns on the halt, turns on the march, saluting, rifle drill, the lot. You do funeral drill, reverse arms, you do everything. So while you're on that course, part of that course is um, room inspections, again, because, again, part of that drill and discipline is to be able to inspect rooms, uh, et cetera, so that you know what to do when you have to do it. So during that, you will get room inspections. You will stu be stood by your bed, although you're a corporal, maybe even a sergeant. You're still going to be stood by your bed and have your rooms inspected. Now, this is where show parades come in those that you remember those. So what happens on a show parade? You're going to love this. So if you make, let's say we're having a, uh, we're having a room inspection. The inspecting sergeant comes into my room. He comes to my bed space, rubs his hand across my locker or across the windowsill by my bed, and there's dust on his fingers. He'll say to me, right, Smith, my name's not Smith, by the way, Smith, 1,800 to hours tonight, down the card guard room show parade, show dust removed. So that's my detail. So at 1,800 hours, I've got to go down to the guard room with the dust that he's found in my bedroom. So I'll gather that dust up in my hand or in an envelope or something, carry that dust down to the guard room, stand there at 1,800 hours. There might be others there. It's bound to be not going to be the only one. There'll be a few of you there. The inspecting guy will come along. It could be the same guy. It could be some of the duty sergeant or whatever. He'll come up to you. What are you down here for? What are you on show pray for? Dust in your room. Show dust removed. And then you would show him a handful of dust or open the envelope up, show him the dust has been removed from your bed space. And then nine times out of ten, that was you back up your room, away finished. Now, here's a couple of stories for you. So the first one was a friend of mine kept getting the words of command on drill wrong. He just couldn't. <laughs> he, just, he was just in bits. Every time there was... Uh, he had to take drill himself and give the words of command. He was getting it all wrong. It weren't pretty. I'm going to have to stand the camera up for this because I need to be animated with both hands. So he was getting it wrong. The instructor said to him, right, Smith. He was called. He was called Smith as well. Just drop the camera. What's that all about? He was called Smith as well, we'll say. And uh, let's just get your level. So anyway, he said, right, Smith, show parade tonight, 1,800 hours down the guard room, show brains removed. Show brains removed. So all he'd done, he went down to the cookhouse, he got a little plastic carrier bag, he got the chef to put some spaghetti noodles or something in there and some tomatoes and tin tomatoes, mashed it all up so it looked like a bit like brains. And he stood outside the guard room, sergeant come along, what are you here for, Smith? Show brains removed, right, show brains removed. So he opened the bag up, showed him what was inside it. He went, right, it's off, that's you. Better than that one, though, one of the lads on my course lost his voice. Went out on the parade square, shouting and screaming for a few days or a week or so, and he'd gone really hoarse. His voice was on the way out. So he got show parade, show voice. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. 
We went to the cookhouse and we got one of those brown carrier bags, the ones that used to put the haversack rations in, your, your packed lunch in. And we got the empty bag and we went down the guard room. I stood behind him. He blew into the bag, so it was all puffed up and held it tight like that. And I stood behind him. The instructor come along. He went, ah, Smith, I know what you're here for. Show voice. So as Smith opened the bag, I was stood behind him and I went, one, two, three, one. And he shut the bag again. Now show voice, right? Piss off you two. So that was what show breaks is all about. So hopefully that's brought back a few memories about locker inspections, room inspections, having your kit thrown around. I mean, I've seen people's beds get turned over. Here's another one. I remember when I got my bed space for the first time, didn't get picked up by the instructor. The instructor. He come around my locker for the first time, didn't get picked up. My bed was immaculate. My bed block was immaculate. I'd nailed it. So that night, I slept on the floor next to my bed with my DOS bag and my old green maggot. I thought, I'm not messing that bed up. I'm not breaking that bed block down. It was perfect. So I didn't touch any of it. Slept on the floor that night. Didn't touch my bed space. Up in the morning, another room inspection, and he ripped it apart. He put my bed space through. <laughs> I think he knew I'd kept on the floor. So anyway, I'm sure you've got some memories, guys. From the United States, you guys having your room inspection, especially the United States Marine Corps. I know you get a right beast in with your instructors. Australia as well, New Zealand, Canada, all over the place. Let me know. Royal Air Force is another one. What about if you're in the Royal Navy? Any Royal Navy lads out there? Now, after your basic training, when you're on a ship, or even worse, if you're in a submarine, how on earth do you, you haven't even got a big locker like we had in the Army? You must have a little tiny place to get all your kit. So let me know what that was like living out of a tiny little box in a submarine or something. Anyway, troops, thanks very much for the support as always. If anyone's watching this and haven't subscribed, please consider it or please give us a thumbs up if you can. I want to try and keep this channel going, as I've said before, but I do need support from you guys. We are getting there. We are getting better now. You blokes are, uh, and girls are doing me proud. So, as always, troops, till the next time, let's tag.